Hey, welcome back to the channel. So we got our new version of Mac OS. This time we're talking about Sequoia. So I thought I'd pull out this trusty old MacBook Pro 2012 and see how it performs. Now, of course, I used OpenCore Legacy Patcher to install this. If you want a tutorial on how to do that, I have an older one on how to install a uh, Sonoma on here. Uh, if you want to see an updated version of that for Sequoia, I'm happy to do that. The process is pretty much the same though. Now I'm gonna do this video a little bit different than I typically do these videos. I'm gonna record it in real time behind me so you can see the actual performance of this rather than me just kind of intersplicing uh, different pieces of me doing things. You're gonna see it in real time because I, I want you to see the performance on this because uh, it ain't great to be honest. So you be your own judge, but you can see uh, one of the features we have, you know, the motion backgrounds and that's working fine on here at the uh, lock screen. So. We're gonna go ahead and log in. And this should move a little bit and slowly come to a stop. And it's trying. And there we go. So it gracefully came to a stop. Sometimes I see this just boom, come to a stop in a completely different uh, spot. So I don't, I don't know if that's an issue with doing this on an unsupported Mac or just an issue with the OS. But if we go into about this Mac, we can see it's the MacBook Pro, the 2.5 gigahertz dual core Intel Core i5, uh, the HD Graphics 4000, and I upgraded this to 16 gigs of RAM. If you're gonna do this, do not do it with less than 16 gigs of RAM, just don't even try. This is the max that I can do on this machine or that anybody can do on this machine. You can see that we're running uh, Sequoia, the latest version as of the date of this video. Um, as far as what works, pretty much everything works. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all the ports work. Uh, I haven't tested the FireWire because I don't have any FireWire devices, but even the uh, CD drive works. I have uh, some old CDs and they read just fine. I'll get into the things that don't work later, but basically it's pretty obvious that anything that requires an M1 or above, any Apple silicone you know, specific features are not gonna work on here because it's an older Intel one. So let's just open up a application. Um, oh, another thing that works is iCloud. I get to ask that a lot in these videos. iCloud works just fine because we're not spoofing any addresses or, or any serial numbers or anything. You're using your default serial number. So you have full access to all the iCloud stuff. So you can see that application launched pretty quickly. So let's go out to uh, like youtube.com, maybe <laughs> if I can spell it right. Let's go to my channel, see how long this takes to load up. And I am on uh, Wi-Fi 6E and I'm basically right next to my router, just so you get an idea uh, with gigabit ethernet, which I guess isn't all that fast anymore. <laughs> but um, you can see it, it loads up. Uh, let's launch one of my videos here. I'm not signed in, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip this ad and then so it's running, um, it runs really well. It's not skipping or anything. We're only at 480. Let's go to 1080p here and then go full screen. And you can see it's working. The uh, trackpad gestures work so I can swipe back, back and forth uh, just by swiping left and right. And we can leave that running in the background and open something else. Like let's open uh, FaceTime and maybe the settings. Now things take a while to launch as you're gonna see here. Once they're launched, uh, they, they're working pretty well, but they take a while to get to that point. So let's continue. And this is another thing I'm glad that came out because some of those dialogues, the initial dialogues that you have when you first install this, take a little while to go away, you get that spinning beach ball, but I haven't locked, had it lock up or anything like that. It just, it takes a little while for just about everything, but you can see the cameras working. And honestly, these cameras are not too bad on these laptops as old as they are. I mean, I've gotten more recent laptops, even this year that have a much worse camera. So the camera's serviceable and it works. Um, use an open core legacy patcher to install Sequoia on the 2012 MacBook Pro. Uh, we can get into the settings now going between these settings tabs again that's pretty slow and if you remember in my sonoma video that it was slow there as well so 
these machines are just getting, you know, they're, they're getting old. They're getting long in the tooth here. So each version of Mac OS is a little bit slower and a little bit slower. Like this is slower than it was last year. So you can get these things pretty cheap, you know, around a hundred bucks or so, but you just got to be patient with it. If you're using it for web browsing and email and things like that, uh, office work, it's fine as long as you are patient for things to open. But if you want a super snappy computer, unfortunately, this little guy doesn't, doesn't do it anymore. Let's go ahead and open Finder just to show you again how long or fast, <laughs> long or short things take here. Uh, let's just open Notes. Again, I'm just opening things here to, to let you know how they work. And again, it's that initial screen and it just takes a while to, to load up. But once you're past that, it's fine. Some of the things that don't work, like I said, all the ports work, the keyboard works, all the function keys on the keyboard work. The screen still looks phenomenal. Camera works, all the ports work. Trackpad works with the gestures and everything. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. What doesn't work is um, the iPhone mirror mirroring. That does not work. That's not going to work on any Intel machines using OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Um, it's just one of the features that's not supported. And you can go to their website and see exactly what is supported and not. But that doesn't work. Some of the new camera features don't work where it kind of follows you and you can do different uh, like background effects and stuff. Those aren't going to work. Sidecar, I, it's been hit and miss for me. I've gotten it to work sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. Even when it does work, it's real jittery and just it, it's a poor experience. So I'm going to say it doesn't work. Uh, another thing that doesn't work is using your iPhone as a camera. I can never get it to connect. In fact, if I take it here, let's go back into FaceTime here and I'm going to hold my phone near here and see if I can go. So you can see it's showing my iPhone in here, but when I select it, it shows it for a second, but it's not a, uh, a live feed. Like it gets one frame of it. And that's it. And that's as far as I've gotten. That's actually, I'm pretty surprised. Oh, wait. Oh, it's actually working now. This is further than I have ever gotten this to work. So it looks like it is working on this video. I tried it just earlier this morning and I didn't even get that one frame. So that's pretty sweet. It looks like that's working now. So yeah, using your iPhone as a camera does, does work. Look, there's, oh, wow. Now you can see how messy it is behind the camera, but all right. I, I'm just, Surprised because that did not work earlier today. So awesome. That works. Um, like I said, sidecar technically works, but it's not a great experience. Uh, I don't know. I, I, let me know if you want me to test any other features on here. This thing works where you click on the background and it shows you, I hate this feature, honestly. <laughs> I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I hate this, this where you click on the desktop and it moves everything out of the way because I keep accidentally clicking, clicking on the desktop. And yeah, I know you could turn that off, but that's still, I, I don't know. I don't get it, but you know, you might, might love it and that's awesome. So that's about it for this little guy. I would say don't even bother installing Sequoia on here. Go with an older version of Mac OS. If you have one of these, just, you know, stay with an older version because you're the newer features are a lot of them are Apple Silicon specific. So you're not going to be able to use them with this anyway. So yeah, I would say if you have one of these guys, upgrade the heck of it. Uh, up, definitely upgrade the storage to the largest, fastest you can put in there. Upgrade to 16 gigs of RAM and then install a version of Mac OS that's still supported, but um, well supported from a patching standpoint, but isn't within the last two years, I would say like Sonoma and Sequoia. Uh, they're both pretty slow on this. So I hate to say it because this is still one of my favorite Apple devices ever made. Just the fact that you can upgrade it and service it. And uh, it's it still performs really well here like 12 years later. But um, yeah, with the newer operating systems, it's not really worth it. Now I'm going to have a similar video on this with my 2015 MacBook Pro, and that's a different story. So if you want to say, see that, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'll have that up shortly. And, uh, if you have any other questions on this guy, if there's anything that I didn't show you that you want to see or that you want me to test, just let me know 
down in the uh, comment section below. You can also go to my subreddit. I honestly haven't been all that active on there, but I'm going to be at more active on all social media and uploading more videos uh, here in the coming months. So thanks so much for staying this long. I uh, hope you found this useful and informative. If you did hit that thumbs up, if you really liked it, hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much.